This podcast doesn't have many visual aids, but at select moments, I'll replace the logo you're seeing now with an image of a website or a tantalizing data table. The visual aids aren't essential, and you can easily find them online later if you wish. In fact, I'll link to them. The controversy surrounding the 4% safe withdrawal rate may be confusing to some, but it provides us with a helpful reminder. Every retiree's situation is different. Given all the variability in human experience, why would we expect one rule to apply to everyone, or even most people? But in defense of the 4% rule, let me say that I like having a standard, or an anchor, in discussions about safe withdrawal rates. If you had asked me 15 years ago what percentage would be safe to withdraw in my first year of retirement, I wouldn't have known what to say. So for people contemplating the question for the first time, it's nice to have some number to anchor on and adjust from. Some people may arrive at this podcast feeling very unsure, like I would have felt many years ago, about how much a prudent person should withdraw in their first year of retirement. If that unsure person seeks the advice of a competent financial advisor, they might get a recommendation to withdraw around 3% to 5% in the first year. What I just said is a generalization, but it would probably be true for at least 9 out of 10 prospective retirees who consulted a financial advisor. The 4% rule is still useful as a heuristic, not a final answer, but a heuristic that helps get a discussion started. One way you can think about the controversy surrounding the 4% rule is that people are forever disagreeing about how much to adjust around 4%. To cut through the confusion, we can spend hours reading the most sophisticated analysis I'm aware of on safe withdrawal rates. It appears on the website earlyretirementnow.com. Karsten Yeska, also known as Big Earn, is the economist behind Early Retirement Now. As of this recording, Dr. Yeska's safe withdrawal series on Early Retirement Now has 50 excellent parts or chapters to it. But I have to confess, I'm interested enough in safe withdrawal rates to spend a few hours studying, but not dozens of hours. I've been interested enough to read some of the chapters at Early Retirement Now, and somebody listening now may be interested in reading every part. But my goal in this very short podcast is to recommend the Early Retirement Now website and Dr. Yeska's Safe Withdrawal Rate series on that website. My secondary goal is to draw attention to my very favorite table in the Safe Withdrawal Rate series. If you're like I am, this one table may answer many of your questions about safe withdrawal rates. So let me show you this favorite table that I'm talking about. This is the point in the podcast in which you might want to look at your screen if possible. All right, let me display a little part of the Early Retirement Now website and specifically the Safe Withdrawal Rate series on the website. I'm going to show you part one. Think of it as chapter one or the, the first bit uh, of the Safe Withdrawal Rate series on the Early Retirement Now website. If you'd like to find this on your own, note the, the keywords. And then about halfway through this uh, part one, is this excellent table. Let me orient you to it. The columns represent different withdrawal rates. They vary in how conservative they are. And then the rows, we have nested rows, but you can see that uh, the rows vary according to the retiree's stock allocation. And then they also vary according to how long the retirement will be. So let's look at a 4% withdrawal rate. We can see that a 4% withdrawal rate has a high probability of success that's represented by uh, green in the cell. It has a high probability of success if there's a sufficiently high allocation to stocks and if the retiree is likely to live only 30 years after their retirement date. This is why in the early retirement community, 
It is often said that a withdrawal rate more conservative than 4% is necessary. Otherwise, you end up in one of these reddish cells that implies that the portfolio has an unacceptably high chance of being cremated before you are, or in, in one of the yellow cells that might make many of us nervous. But look, for example, at a 3.5% withdrawal rate and let's say a, a 50% allocation to stocks, which is fairly conservative. For a 40-year retirement, that still has a 98% chance of success. And extremely conservative early retirees might be looking at an even more conservative withdrawal rate, like 3% or 3.25%, uh, so that they can safely stay within these, uh, these, these green cells here. So the 50 parts of the safe withdrawal rate series are excellent, but if you're looking for a very quick introduction, I especially recommend this table. That's it. I appreciate the Early Retirement Now website so much, I just felt like I needed to draw more admirers to it. Enjoy.